Hey, what's up guys? So I've been taking uh, Tonkat Ali for roughly uh, five years off and on and um, up until about a year ago when I would tell people that I'm taking something like Tonkat Ali, they would look at me sideways like I'm a complete freak and an idiot. You're crazy, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. However, all of that changed roughly a year ago when Andrew Huberman went on to the Joe Rogan experience and mentioned Tonkat Ali um, as a possible herb to increase testosterone. And lucky for me, now when I tell people that I'm taking Tonkat Ali, they actually know what I'm talking about and they no longer think that I am a complete fool. So thank you, Andrew. Now, the issue here is that whenever a health practice or supplement goes from being super fringe um, to kind of going mainstream, like Tonkat Ali has in the past year or so. Um, the issue here is that you end up having a lot of people that start to take it um, and one, have no idea what it's doing to their body and two, um, it can actually be harmful to some individuals that don't know what they're doing and are um, maybe taking it in too high of a dosage or are taking it and don't understand what the possibilities of the side effects are. And so essentially what I want to do in this video is walk through the primary mechanisms of action of Tonkat Ali, as well as the side effects that are associated with those mechanisms of action so that you guys can get a proper understanding of whether or not you should actually be taking Tonkat Ali. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Tonkat Ali, Tonkat Ali is primarily used by um, specifically men to increase uh, libido and improve mood, as well as possibly increase testosterone. And along with things like ashwagandha, uh, Tonkat Ali appears to be one of the only effective supplements that might might increase testosterone in young, healthy adults. And so let's go ahead and jump into the first mechanism of action as well as the side effects that are associated with that mechanism of action. Now, the first mechanism that we're gonna talk about today is Tonkat Ali's ability to um, fairly potently suppress estrogen signaling in the body. And specifically, it's been shown to, um, one, prevent the conversion of testosterone into estrogen, which typically is a good thing, um, but it's also been shown to um, somewhat potent potently block the estrogen receptors as well. Now, this is arguably the primary mechanism by which Tonkat Ali actually increases testosterone. However, there are some um, notable side effects to keep in mind here, and the first one is headaches. Now, there is a lot of conflicting data uh, as to exactly why a drop in estrogen levels actually causes headaches. However, it is fairly well established that when you either, one, block the estrogen receptors, or two, um, uh, cause a dramatic or sudden drop in estrogen levels in the body, that there is a risk of headaches. And a great example of this is um, actually women during their menstrual cycle. Um, a lot of women that uh, start their menstrual cycle during the beginning period of that week, uh, there usually is a lot of headaches that are associated with that time period because of the dramatic shift and the dramatic drop um, in estrogen levels during that time period. Now, anyone that already has normal or low estrogen levels, if you do decide to take Tonkat Ali, you do particularly run the risk of encountering this side effect. And so it is just um, simply just important to um, be aware of this possible side effect. Now, the second possible side effect that is associated with a um, either one blocking of the estrogen receptors or two, a drop in estrogen levels is issues with the circulatory system. Now, the reason for this is that estrogen is actually a fairly potent um, uh, vasodilator. And so when you prevent the effects of estrogen on the circulatory system, there is um, a somewhat increased risk of cardiovascular events. And so this is particularly relevant for um, for older guys that are maybe in their 50s and 60s and are wanting to try out Tonkat Ali. Um, it is important to keep in mind if you are predisposed to cardiovascular events and see a lot of cardiovascular events in your family tree or are specifically predisposed genetically, um, I would keep an eye on this and maybe run it by your doctor because in that specific scenario, the risk to reward ratio really just doesn't work out in your favor um, when trying something like Tonkat Ali. Now, the next possible side effect that is related to the estrogen uh, related mechanisms of Tonkat Ali is joint pain. And this is one that I particularly uh, run into 
uh, somewhat frequently if I take uh, Tonkatali in too high of a dosage or for too long, and that is just my joints ache. And the reason for this is that estrogen is a fairly potent um, modulator and regulator of joint health. And so when you suppress um, estrogen signaling too much, it can have a negative effect on joint health. And so again, just keep this in mind if you're taking Tonkatali and do end up noticing that your joints are hurting a little bit more than they used to, um, just again, make sure to dial back your dosage or to take um, a break from supplementing with Tonkatali. Now, before we move on any further in this video, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Let's Get Checked. If you're looking for natural ways to increase testosterone levels, one of the first steps is going to be actually getting a complete hormone profile done. Everyone's hormones are at a completely different place, and so there just really isn't a one-size-fits-all approach to optimizing your hormone profile. The approach that is effective for one guy may actually be detrimental to another, and so if you haven't had your hormone profile checked yet, I would highly highly recommend looking into my friends over at Let's Get Checked. They have one of the most comprehensive tests on the market and what's more is that you can actually do it at home. Now this is a super sweet deal so make sure to check out the link in the description down below uh, for 30% off of your test. Now the last possible side effect that's associated with the estrogen related mechanisms of Tonkat Ali is uh, hair loss. Now Derek has done a fantastic job of outlining this on his channel. Uh, more plates, more dates, but estrogen is a fairly potent modulator of hair loss. And so um, typically the more estrogen signaling you have in the body, the better you maintain hair growth. And so um, when you suppress estrogen signaling, there is a somewhat um, increased risk of hair fall. And now luckily I'm not personally genetically predisposed to hair loss, but for guys that are out there um, that are genetically predisposed, this is something to keep in mind when supplementing with Tom Catalina. Now, when it comes to mitigating these side effects, one of the primary things that you want to do in order to mitigate against the estrogen-related side effects is to simply, and this is somewhat controversial, but is to simply um, supplement or increase your intake of phytoestrogens. And now, these would be things like turkesterone and ectosterone, as well as my personal favorite, pomegranate juice, um, which contain phytoestrogens that preferentially bind to the beta subset of estrogen receptors and seem to have some positive uh, modulatory effect on joint health and hair loss. And this is why I have particularly become such a big fan of turkesterone in the past year or so. And that is because it specifically does um, somewhat potently bind to the beta subset of estrogen receptors and it kind of helps to offset uh, some of the negative side effects of Tonkat Ali. Now, it is important that you space out your intake of Tonkat Ali and turkesterone because Tonkat Ali can actually block the effects of turkesterone. Um, however, However, they do seem to complement each other if you do uh, time your intake well. Now, it is also important to keep in mind here that if you are a regular consumer of nicotine, that you may also be predisposed to the estrogen-related side effects here, simply because nicotine is also a fairly potent anti-estrogenic compound. So um, again, if you are consuming nicotine uh, on a somewhat frequent basis, just keep this in mind and make sure to keep um, an eye out for side effects. Now, the next mechanism of action that I want to talk about real quick is uh, Tonkat Ali's ability to increase dopamine in the central nervous system. Now, the two primary side effects that are associated with the dopaminergic effects of Tonkat Ali are irritability and insomnia. Now, when it comes to irritability, I do think that dopamine is a vastly misunderstood neurotransmitter. Dopamine is often called the pleasure neurotransmitter, which it is to some degree, however, is more accurately described as the motivation neurotransmitter transmitter. It's actually what motivates you uh, to actually pursue a reward. And so the issue here psychologically is that if you increase dopamine too much, it can actually um, motivate you to the point to where if anything goes wrong or if anything gets in your way, you get extremely irritable. And so Tonkat Ali's ability to increase dopamine can actually be a good thing for guys that are struggling with motivation, but for guys that are already highly motivated, um, increasing dopamine 
learning beyond that natural level um, can actually be detrimental and can cause some negative effects on mood. Now, the next side effect to be aware of when it comes to Tonkat Ali's uh, dopaminergic effects are um, its ability to kind of disrupt sleep and cause insomnia. And now, again, the reason for this is because uh, dopamine is such a motivating neurochemical uh, that if you take Tonkat Ali too late in the afternoon, um, it can disrupt your sleep and kind of just lead to insomnia. And so, again, if you are somebody uh, who struggles to get to sleep, it may not be a good idea to take Tonkat Ali in the afternoon. But at the end of the day, it really just depends on your personal biochemistry and your neurochemistry and how stressed you are. And there's just a ton of different factors. So just be aware of these. And if you do encounter them, um, make sure to play around with when you're actually taking Tonkat Ali. Now, when it comes to mitigating against the effects of these possible side effects, obviously the most uh, simplest way to uh, mitigate against these is to uh, lower your dosage or to take a break from supplementation. However, um, you can also try just simply increasing your carbohydrate intake. Carbs uh, do a fantastic job of actually increasing your uh, brain's permeability to tryptophan, which is going to increase uh, central nervous system uh, levels of serotonin, uh, which can help counteract some of the dopaminergic effects of Tonkat Ali. And so obviously you don't want to take this to the extreme either. However, it is a fairly simple way to kind of balance out some of the neurological effects of Tonkat Ali. Now, the last mechanism of action that we want to talk about real quick is Tonkat Ali's ability to suppress cortisol. Now, typically suppressing cortisol is a good mechanism of action in individuals that are particularly stressed. However, if you are someone who struggles with motivation and you struggle like getting up in the morning, um, Tonkat Ali can actually exacerbate this to some degree. There is a little bit of evidence and research to suggest that Tonkat Ali is um, an anti-anxiety for um, a couple of different reasons, but primarily because of its ability to suppress cortisol and suppress the activation of the HPA axis. And now again, the obvious and easiest way to mitigate against this effect is to simply lower your dosage if you do um, run into a lethargic mood. However, you can somewhat mitigate against this effect as well by using stimulants such as caffeine or simply just using cold showers in the morning to kind of mitigate against the uh, stress suppressing effects of Tonkat Ali. But one of the main things to keep in mind here is that just everyone responds so differently to pretty much every herbal supplement because of just how many different mechanisms of action these herbal supplements have and because of the different biochemistry that everyone has. And so um, it's just super important to keep in mind how these things make you feel uh, so that you can kind of mitigate against some of the possible side effects as well as maximize some of the upsides. Now, one of the most common questions I get regarding uh, supplements that are used to increase testosterone is Zach what happens when I stop taking it? Will my testosterone actually drop below where it was before? And the short answer to this question is I don't really know. Uh, there really isn't any direct research. However, um, it is entirely possible. And so because of that, and because we just don't have a full um, understanding of how these uh, compounds and supplements interact with the body long term, I do think it would be prudent and wise to take frequent breaks every single week, um, as well as longer breaks periodically just to give your body a break and to kind of allow it to normalize to some degree. But other than that, guys, that's pretty Pretty much all I have for this video. Again, make sure to check out the description down below for 30% off of an at-home hormone blood test, as well as links to my favorite supplements and products and guides. But other than that, I think I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.